Hello everyone, my name is Miraj and I'm going to talk about my project presentation in MRI class which is about raw signal and image viewing in MRI lab software. Um, as we all know, the MRI imaging technique works by collecting the imaging signals and first transforming in, into a Fourier space in 2D and then finally doing a Fourier transform in 2D so that we have the image of the viewed object. So here I refer to raw image as this one, which is the raw data presentation in the case space or the Fourier space. And we have also the time signals and the raw signals coming from the object. In MRI lab I couldn't find anywhere to see these uh, entities, so I thought it would be a nice project to add. Um, here is the existing code in Cartesian reconstruction. The module, as you can see, the signal S is constructed by the in-phase and the quadrature components, so it is a complex signal. And then to um, build the image, there is a Fourier transform, an in inverse actually, inverse Fourier transform done, done on the signal, so that we have the image, the real imaginary parts, and also the magnitude and the phase. This is the existing code. What I added was for the r displaying the raw image and the raw signal, basically, in the raw image, um, which you what I've done is I've taken the absolute value and the logarithm so that um, it is clearer because if you don't do not take the logarithm then all you see is a bright spot and the nuances are lost and then display this signal in the um, scaled image and in the raw signal I just plotted the magnitude of this complex signal and in a separate figure of course to implement these in the existing MRI lab, MRI lab software I um, coded two buttons for raw image and raw signal view so when you click on them you see the raw image and the raw signal respect. And here is what I added the code I added in more detail. We have basically have two functions for the raw image button and the raw signal button. These are callbacks which are executed whenever the button is pressed in MATLAB's um, GUI design. And basically I also have an if statement here because um, by the way the software works, we have uh, one single image in gradient echo, but when we do a spin echo we get two images and only the second one uh, actually represents the object. So I added an if statement to check and select the second image if it's a spin echo. Um, and then we display the raw image by first um, centering the image and then finally showing it as an image in black and white. Um, in the raw sig callback means this is executed whenever the raw signal button is pressed. Um, this is simpler. We take the global variable. The code stores the signal here, basically, and I take the magnitude and show the plot. Um, here are some results from the software. I will do a live demo later, but this is for some examples. As you can see, this is a brain example. And here we see the raw image of that. And from the theory we know that there must be a free transform correspondence between these two. And while this is not really clear because it's a complex image, at least we can see that the image is brightest in the middle, as one would expect because the DC components are the highest in magnitude. When we take a cylindrical object whose cross-section is a circle, we see that the resulting raw image is a jink function, which is a J1 Bessel function over X, so it is similar to the sync function but it is different and you can see from the image that we do have it with actually a bit more bit of a noise coming from the imaging technique as well. And I also tried to have a case space, um, have a sine wave in the case space which would correspond to two delta functions in the real space but um, to make delta functions you have to have very small objects and then this results in um, the signal, received signal being um, lower in magnitude and um, slightly above the noise so that most of what you can see is noise but we can also differentiate these stripes between so ideally this would be black white black white like a striped view but this is basically a sine wave with the noise added in and finally we can when we image a cube object we see cross section is a square and this corresponds to a 2D sync function in the raw case space 
And we can also look at the row signals. This is a signal from the resulting cube image. And one thing to notice is that we have these echoes growing in magnitude and then decreasing again, where this corresponds to the echo time. And we can also see that the um, envelopes of these signals, these echoes look like sync because the original image was a rectangle function. And finally we can make the observation some we can verify some theoretical observations here. Um, when we compare the gradient echo imaging versus spin echo imaging. First let us compare the echo times or TEs. In gradient echo we have a shorter TE. Mm, this is because for example in spin echo we have to um, excite the image with two different um, RF pulses, one with a 90 degrees flip angle to start the excitation and 180 degrees flip angle to revert so that the um, echoes converge and we have the time echo here so that the echo time in general takes longer as comp compared to gradient echo for which we only have um, one single RF pulse so that the whole process takes a shorter time but as you can also see we have the magnitudes differ in gradient echo we have a 400 figure whereas in spin echo we have a much higher um, 1400 figure even though spin echo um, took a longer time actually because um, the reason this magnitude is higher in spin echo is because in spin echo we get rid of the, um, the coil effect so there is no shimming and we are left with T2 uh, decay and T2 decay is much slower in, than T2 star decay which is faster so in spin echo imaging since T2 decay is slower the resulting magnitude is still high even though there is a long time has passed whereas in the gradient echo we have the T2 star decay which incorporates the um, shimming effects of the coils which we don't get rid of so the whole signal decays a lot faster and in this case we have a lower magnitude corresponding to the gradient echo imaging and we can verify these by looking at the raw signal magnitudes and we will also do a live demo here this is the MRLab software in MATLAB um, first you load a phantom Im image Let's load the cube, um, custom cube object that I made here. And here we see the original image in axial, sagittal, and coronal axes. And then after this, we choose a sequence. Let us choose the gradient echo sequence. And finally, we do the scan, which does the simulation. And now we see the resulting image which is the same as the original image but maybe as you can see a bit of a noise and then by clicking these buttons we see the raw image first and then the raw signal and as we look at them we see that the raw image is indeed um, a 2D sync function corresponding to the rectangle or nature of the object and this is the raw signal magnitude corresponding to the gradient echo imaging um, in conclusion I think I have added functionalities to see the raw image and the raw signal in MRL. Um, one downside is that these axes, for example in the raw signal view, um, we don't have the time series signal, so this says 4000 but it's actually the 4000 element. Um, it would be of course nicer to know in milliseconds maybe or microseconds which this 4000 corresponds to. To do that I had to um, take the original time series array in the code but I couldn't find it and I suspect this is because um, the MATLAB code uses external C++ code um, to handle these um, heavy computations and you have to make some additional functions etc to transfer data between this C++ functions and the MATLAB functions but apart from that as you can see we can um, observe the raw image and the raw signal, which is a functionality added to MRI Lab. Thank you for listening.